I'm Vinny Politan. Thank you so much for joining us here on Closing Arguments. And those of you who've been watching me on this program and other programs through the years, listening to me uh, on the radio, you know, at the end of the show, I always say, don't forget to hug the kids as a, as a reminder. And it's, it's a reminder in, in, in many different ways. First, uh, for those of us who are parents, it's a, a simple reminder. Hey, don't forget to hug your kids. And I know you at home, you don't forget. Uh, but it's a reminder. Because children rely upon us for everything. And as when you're a parent, you know that child trusts you. Absolutely trusts you with everything and for everything. And it's a big responsibility. And when I say don't forget to hug the kids, yeah, don't forget. Hug your kids. Take care of your kids. And many children are very well taken care of by loving parents. But some children aren't as fortunate. And when I say hug the kids, I don't mean just your kids. Uh, you know, literally hug your own children. But then think about all children out there, because I think we as adults in society have that responsibility to keep our eyes open for children who aren't as lucky as your kids or aren't as lucky as you were growing up. And, and children who have been in a home where that trust is broken and all of a sudden, now who's looking out for that child? It's got to be the rest of us, whether it's, it's a neighbor, whether it's, it's, it's people in our system, family services, family, wherever, wherever that person is. All of us, as, as the adults, we've got to take care of the children. Because when we don't, it is so tragic and unfair. And that's the story we have tonight of a little girl who two years ago was five years old in, in a world that you can't imagine. Here's the story of Harmony. This is little five-year-old Harmony Montgomery clutching her doll and smiling for the camera. When you look at this picture, everything seems very normal. Harmony seems happy and cared for. But sometimes, pictures can be very deceiving because Harmony's world is anything but normal and happy. Her father has been arrested and charged with second-degree assault. The victim? His five-year-old daughter, Little Harmony. But that's not the most troubling part of Harmony's world. This picture is from 2019, and there are not any newer pictures of Harmony. The photographs of this little angel are all over two years old. That's because she's been missing since October or November of 2019. Help us find this little girl. Someone knows something, do what is right, and call in. I cannot emphasize that enough. Somebody out there knows something. It's time for people to do the right thing. According to a police affidavit, Harmony's mother, Crystal Sori, says she lost custody to Harmony's father, Adam, because she was dealing with a substance abuse problem. She says the last time she saw Harmony was a FaceTime call on Easter of 2019. Meanwhile, Harmony's father, Adam, says Crystal picked up Harmony for Thanksgiving in 2019, but Adam's girlfriend at the time says Adam told her he dropped Harmony off at Crystal's. Now, back to the assault charges. Adam's uncle claims that Adam admitted to bashing Harmony around the house and witnessing Harmony being spanked very hard, forced to stand in the corner for hours, and scrubbing the toilet with her toothbrush. So while the court system is dealing with the charges against Adam Montgomery, the chief is still looking for this beautiful little girl in the photo. Quite frankly, enough is enough. It's a seven-year-old girl. Let's find her, all right? Let's come together as a community and do the right thing. That's all I'm asking, and I don't think I'm asking a lot. If, if people think that I am, then I'll leave it at that. How, how does this happen? Again, the, the headline here, She's been gone for two years, and, and just now, 
being reported missing? Just now the search is starting? How, how does that happen? Let's bring in our guest tonight. Uh, joining us in uh, Jacksonville, Alabama, professor of forensics at Jacksonville State University, forensic media analyst, and former senior investigator for the Fulton County Medical Examiner's Office, Joseph Scott Morgan is with us in Salt Lake City, Utah, private investigator Jason Jensen. And also joining us tonight from Arlington, Virginia, is the adoptive father of Harmony's brother, Blair. Brother, Blair Miller is with us. It's the only part of the show I read, and I messed it up. I'm so sorry, Blair. Uh, Blair Miller, uh, great to have you uh, with us tonight. Um, le let me ask you, uh, Blair, for the folks at home, and, and explain to us your connection to Harmony so we can get a little bit more uh, of the story and understanding of, of, of what we're dealing with here. So our son, Jameson, who is now five years old, my husband and I, we adopted him um, back in October of 2019 when we lived up in Boston. And uh, Jameson is the biological sibling of Harmony. Those two have a close relationship. They always have. Jameson was in and out of foster homes. Harmony was there for some of those times, some of those stays in different foster homes. And Harmony was, when we found out about Jameson and were matched with Jameson, um, we instantly heard about Harmony's story and heard about the connection with Jameson. And Harmony, we were told by social services in Massachusetts that Harmony had been reunited with her biological father in February of 2019. So um, the focus was now on Jameson and we adopted him. He still very much asks about his sister and wants to keep that relationship going. We've been trying to keep that relationship going as well. When you, when this hit the headlines and, 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 and everyone started talking about this case. Um, what was your reaction? What went through your mind? I think we were surprised it reached this point. We've had an open relationship and still do with Jameson and Harmony's mother. And that's been important for, we have three adopted boys and that's always been important for all the relationships we have with our children that um, they have a good relationship with their families. They're part of our family. We're one big family. And so when Crystal called us on Friday to tell us um, where this stood, um, this is something she had been talking to us about a long time. And we've been encouraging her to go to police, go to anyone who would listen up in New Hampshire if she had concerns about where uh, Harmony was. There were some custody issues there between the father and Crystal. And so um, we encouraged her and tried to support that as much as we could because, again, we wanted to have a, a relationship with Harmony as well for our son's sake, uh, because he values her so much and cares so much about her. Uh, so of course we were surprised to hear uh, where it stood because um, we were hoping it was just a case of someone not wanting someone to be part of the conversation. We've reached out to the father before through social media, never gotten a response. And um, obviously it's heartbreaking. You know, we're all of our hearts are breaking right now. And our focus right now is finding Harmony and getting her home safely for her sake, obviously, but obviously from our standpoint, from our son's sake. And as you mentioned, uh, Crystal, and I, you know, I was reading through the, the affidavit because she spoke to investigators and kind of gave the story. And it seems like it all um, involves, at least from his perspective, he's making allegations that there was some sort of exchange in Thanksgiving of 2019, which would have been right around the time I guess that you were uh, adopting Jameson. Sure, and you know, knowing Crystal, you know, she's wanted nothing more um, to have a relationship with her kids, and that that's always been very important to her. And I I know if Harmony were ever in her arms, we would be FaceTiming with her instantly because she would want to show us, and that has been imp important, just as important to her as it is to us. And she would want to. You know, she'd be FaceTiming with you and she'd want Jameson in on it and to see her, sure. his sister. This, sure. Let me ask you this, and, and you don't have to answer because it, it, it could be very personal and private, so feel free not to answer any of these questions. But uh, how, how is Jameson doing and, and how difficult? It's difficult enough to be a parent <laughs> and to be an adoptive parent, um, but now you've got to deal with this as well. Well, we, we have three very busy boys, nine, eight, and Jameson five. And so our house stays pretty busy and constant. Um, this week, we've all been in turmoil as we've kind of been trying to 
figure out how best we can help, talk with police, talk with U.S. Marshals, and talk with our families about what's going on. Um, we have not talked to Jameson about this, and that's because, frankly, how do you have that conversation with a five-year-old? And how do you have a conversation with one who still yearns to have a relationship with his sister, talks about her? When we go to parks, he feels like he sees her sometimes. He talks to his teacher about his sister. And, you know, when adults can't even figure this out right now, because there are a lot of questions, how do you expect a five-year-old to figure it out? It, it, it's, it's unconscionable uh, what is happening here. Let, let, Joseph Scott Morgan, your thoughts that I just want your initial impressions on, on where we are in all this, because this is unusual because it's two years later where the real investigation now is starting. Yeah, between a rock and a hard place relative to the chronological time. Uh, you know, anytime you have this kind of whittling away of time as you move down that that linear timeline, uh, you're losing precious bits of evidence, you know, clues that'll put you in direct in in particular directions where you want to, you know, sift through everything that is available, everything from digital data to any kind of physical forensics that might give you a clue as to where she might be. And so the initial first blush, that's where I stand right now. Jason Jensen, this is not a cold case, but it's, but it's two years old as it begins. It's, it's extremely unusual. Um, I don't know if I've ever uh, covered a story or a case like this. Uh, your thoughts about where you even start? Well, yeah, just like you said, it, it's actually not a cold case technically because, you know, you got a lot of activity from law enforcement, but it started as a cold case be honest, de facto cold, because they, in missing children cases, they always say, you know, the first 48 hours is the most critical. We're talking not two days, we're talking two years. Uh, Blair, let me ask you about, about Crystal. How is she holding up through this? Because uh, she's been through a lot. Um, and, and, you know, I've, I've read some of the statements that she's made and trying to, you know, put her life back together. And this has just got to be devastating. Sure. And, and I don't want to, I don't want to speak on her behalf and want her to kind of, um, absolutely, you know, get into this as, as she wants. We talked to her, you know, daily. We've talked to her several times today, yesterday. It, um, you know, her heartbreak is, is just getting worse. You know, she's been through a lot before all this even happened. Um, by losing two of her children in custody of, ch of her children. And so she has been through a lot. Um, and I think it's, um, it, it's really hard to describe how she's feeling because even talking with her, texting with her, it's, it's even hard for us to imagine how she's feeling. And Joseph Scott Morgan, the, the uh, reading through the affidavit and, and one part really struck me is this quote from Harmony's father. I have nothing to say. I'm not. Yeah. Your daughter is missing. People are looking for your daughter, and you have nothing to say. I, I, th I think an absence of comment speaks volumes uh, relative to this. Um, I, I got to tell you, I think there's a real desire to begin to peel away the layers here, uh, and. You know, my first stop along this continuum is going to be Family Children Services. They are the ones that in throughout this entire process have allegedly had their finger on the pulse of this family. I want to know what they know, when they knew it, when they last interacted with this family. I want to see every evaluation. I want to talk to caseworkers. Now, you've got two children that have been split up, if you will. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think Jameson was, his case was essentially processed through uh, Massachusetts. And you've got Harmony that's domiciled in New Hampshire. And at some point in time, someone has had to have talked. And there should be reams and reams and reams of data on both of these children out there. And I would imagine at this point in time, uh, 
uh, that the police officer that we saw giving the statement earlier, his team is on this along with the marshals, because right now any scrap of data can give you some kind of uh, information as to where she might be as it applies to the activities of the father, particularly since they've hooked him up on charges now, Ben. And of course they haven't charged him uh, with, you know, the ultimate charge here that, uh, you know, that, that might be on the table eventually, but they do have him in custody. That gives me an indication they have some. Okay. We're going to continue to talk about this story. Uh, uh, Blair, uh, can, can you stay? Sure. Okay. The Blair's going to stay with us. Joseph Scott Morgan, Jason Jensen. Uh, we're going to talk more about this and listen to what the police chief up in Manchester has to say. Don't go anywhere. I'm appealing to everyone. <clears throat> Help us find this little girl. Someone knows something. Do what is right and call in. I cannot emphasize that enough. Somebody out there knows something. It's time for people to do the right thing. I cannot say it enough. I cannot emphasize it enough. That's the chief, uh, Chief Eldenberg, up in Manchester, New Hampshire. And he's a big, tough guy. But during this press conference, you could see and feel and hear uh, that emotion breaking through. This, this is touching a nerve with, with, with people across the country. Um, I want you to take a listen a little bit more of, the, of, of what the chief had to say, because this is, uh, this is a missing child. If you have any information, make that call. Pick up the phone. Why wouldn't you? And that's what the chief was saying. Why, please explain to me why you wouldn't come forward with information. Let's take a listen. Uh, Manchester police received a report this week that Harmony Montgomery has not been seen since late 2019 when she was last seen in a residence in Manchester at that time. The circumstances surrounding this prolonged absence are very concerning and are thoroughly being investigated as we speak. The Manchester Police Department is actively working to locate Harmony. As was released earlier today, Harmony is seven years old. She's pictured on the front of the podium, uh, weighs approximately 50 pounds with blonde hair and blue eyes. The Manchester Police Department became aware of this, this situation this week, and since then we have been working diligently, diligently to locate Harmony and been doing so in conjunction with the New Hampshire Division for Children, Youth and Families, as well as with the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. At this time, I'm not going to discuss or comment specifically on the investigation, other than say that we have spoken with family members of Harmony, and despite doing so, our concerns for the whereabouts of her remain the same, which is why I felt it was imperative to speak publicly about Harmony, with the hopes that by doing so, it will bring greater attention to this investigation. You know, the one thing that gives me a little bit of hope here is that you don't have the family of, of Harmony's father, Adam, like shutting down. They're very open and, and they've been speaking. Let's bring back in our guest still with us, Joseph Scott Morgan, Jason Jensen, and special guest uh, Blair Miller, who has adopted Harmony's brother. Um, Blair, that, I don't know if you know any members of, of, of the family, but, but the one thing that does give me hope in this investigation is that they seemingly have been very open, and, and I think uh, Adam's uncle actually is one of the people who called family services based upon observations of, of what had happened to Harmony. Sure. And we've heard from many uh, family members, you know, beyond, you know, the biological mom, Crystal, whose focus right now is finding out where Harmony is and trying to piece together things. Keep in mind, there's a significant amount of our son's life that we just don't know about because he was in foster care. And so we're getting some of that information, foster parents he was with, getting pictures of when he was an infant. And so we're piecing together some of that as well. But I do believe that uh, you know, everyone's trying to you know, explain what happened and what they know, and more importantly, how this happened. Jason, that's an important part of this investigation, because sometimes in these cases we see families shut down and, and not cooperate. Uh, it's obvious that the father's not cooperating. I have nothing to say is what he, you know, they're looking for your daughter. You have nothing to say. Um, but it seems other members of the family are quite open, and, and, and that gives me some hope that we may get an answer here. Right, yes. Uh, 
earlier you had asked where would be my starting point, and that would be with the family, especially the ones that last saw Harmony, you know, in their custody or possession, that would be the father. And here, Adam Montgomery has rendered inconsistent statements to his wife, Kayla. He mentioned that he was taking her to Crystal. Meanwhile, um, you know, he's also said that Crystal came and picked her up. So which is it? And obviously, it sounds like neither, to be honest. Yeah, I, I don't trust either one of those statements, Joseph. And, and that's a telltale sign, right, when you can't get your story straight with the, the, the woman you're living with because she says that he's saying, yeah, yeah, um, I'm going to drop off uh, Harmony to Crystal. And then uh, the, he tells police, no, no, Crystal came and picked up Harmony. So I don't believe either one of those, Joseph. So I think we got to go um, back in time before Thanksgiving to try to figure this out. Yeah, I know. And, and digging into his known associates and who they might be and the, and the people that he has had interactions with, if he... You know, if he's into false statements and all these prevarications and this sort of thing down the road, who else has he lied to over the years, uh, particularly when it comes to these kids? I, I don't really care what he's done in his past life. But, uh, you know, right now, preeminent is harmony. You know, where is she? And when I start to hear these rumblings of violence uh, that were related uh, relative to her and uh, statements that he had made, that's another, you know, for me as a forensics guy, that's something that's that's very, very troubling. You know, what, what is this guy, uh, ha what kind of potential does he have uh, relative to this little angel? And I would want to know from his associates what they have to say about this. You know, none of the associates have stated they, they, they're gonna clam up, go after him, find out what you can about this guy's history. And if he's got a history going back, a previous arrest and that sort of thing, I wanna know what that consists of as well. Absolutely. Uh, Joseph Scott Morgan, Jason Jensen staying with us. Uh, Blair Miller, want to thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank and you, and let me it. just say, um, adopting three uh, boys, amazing, amazing stuff. Yeah, What's even more amazing, Joseph, is, listen for a second, he's, he's in his house and three boys under 10 and it's quiet? Wow. <laughs> you need to write a book about how you can, how you can accomplish that, Blair. So, uh, thank you so much. We, we do appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, I appreciate that.